Hello everyone, I am Srikant Mantri, currently joining this workshop from India. The work I am presenting today was done in CMAT Lab in University of Tübingen. The major focus of CMAT Lab is to develop novel algorithms, tools and databases that will help in acceleration of novel natural product discovery. I will be sharing the findings of two projects where we were mainly interested in discovering novel biosynthetic gene clusters from soil and also from Tubingen actinomycete strain collection. One of the major driving forces of medical revolution in 20th century was the discovery of antibiotics. These are often derived from secondary metabolites produced by microorganisms. These natural products can be categorized based on their biosynthetic pathways. The major biosynthetic classes are polyketides, non-ribosomal peptides, ribosomally synthesized and post-translationally modified peptides, terpenes and saccharides. The representative examples of popular antibiotic from each of these biosynthetic classes shown in this slide. In bacteria, the genes that encode these biosynthetic pathways are clustered together in the genome. This is popularly termed as biosynthetic gene clusters. The genes in some of these PGCs encode modular domains and enzyme that function in an assembly line-like fashion to produce complex biomolecules. The cartoon animation shown here nicely depicts the assembly line-like biosynthesis pathway of NRPS. A hypothetical phacomycin compound is shown. The adenylation, thylation, condensation, and thioesterase domains and their respective reaction animations are shown. With this brief introduction to the nuts and bolts of biosynthetic gene clusters, let us jump into the first project. This project was mainly about our pilot exploration into studying hidden biosynthesis potential present in the soil. We actually wanted to answer the following questions in this study. Which sequencing method is better at capturing the microbial diversity and biosynthesis potential? What part of the soil should be sampled? Can patterns and correlation from such big data exploration guide the future novel natural product discovery surveys? We have tried to answer these questions in this M-Systems publications. We sample soil from Schoenbuch Forest, three sites that are routinely studied by Geology Department of Geosciences of University of Tübingen were chosen. We sample soil from different horizons, namely organic layer, A layer, and B layer that is shown in this particular image. Though in very close vicinity, the soil profiles show very distinct features. We performed both amplicon sequencing and shotgun metagenome sequencing for all the samples using LuminaSeq and also did a long read nanopore sequencing for one of the samples. Following metagenome analysis workflow were followed. Our major emphasis was also to compare the methods to identify their merits and identify correlation patterns that can guide the future natural product discovery service. I'm quickly highlighting some of our important findings. Planktomycetes phyla in case of 16S rRNA amplicon was a major phyla. But when we did the same taxonomic profile analysis for shotgun data set, we observed that actinobacteria and proteobacteria are the major phyla. So uh, we have to keep in mind that uh, each of this technique uh, probably has its own pros and cons. Like in case of a 16S RNA amplicon, it might be the case that due to uh, primer and PCR bias, uh, we are seeing uh, such kind of diverse taxonomical profile. But in case of uh, shotgun metagenome sequencing, that is not the case. There cannot be a primer bias uh, because it is a shotgun approach. 
but then these profiles are completely different and that should be kept in mind when we are planning to design future such surveys. For 16S RNA gene amplicons, here we observe that the rarefaction curve are saturating at higher sequencing depth. But same is not the case for the BGC domain amplicons, like in case of A amplicons and KS amplicons. Even at higher sequencing depth, the saturation for the operational biosynthetic unit is not happening. So we might need to sequence more in case of amplicon sequencing. These results, when compared to the shotgun sequencing data set, indicate that more than 90% of the domains detected in shotgun samples do not overlap with the amplicon detected domains. In order to disclose any overlap between the different soils, we compared the 16S as well as KS and A domain amplicons in the different samples using upset plot. This analysis revealed that there was an overlap of 42 16S amplicons across all the seven samples. No such degree of sequence similarity was observed for KS and A domains. ASBs of these domains were only conserved between samples of different horizons of the same site. We assembled the shotgun metagenome data to recover full biosynthetic gene cluster sequences and thus obtain more valuable information about the encoded compounds. A total of more than 1000 BGCs were identified. The largest contact size was more than 3.5 megabases. The largest number of BGCs were annotated as belonging to NRPS class. BGC abundance distributions were observed to be greater in sample site-wise comparison than in soil layer-wise comparison. BGC clustering analysis also revealed how different the various samples and horizons are, as only a single BGC was found to be present across all samples. Hybrid assembly of both long reads and short reads improved the metagenomic assembly and resulted in better BGC annotation. So highlights of this study, uh, biosynthetic potential of the forest soil was uncovered by exploration of shotgun metagenome and amplicon sequencing methods to expose the full microbial and biosynthetic diversity in soil. Both methods are important and needed. And also we feel that you don't have to go to far flung place, places or specifically Bahamas to sample soils. We found tremendous biosynthetic potential in different soils and layers that are very close to each other. We also highlight the importance of studying different soil horizons as it is as it can reveal the additional diversity that often remains hidden. Now I come to the second part of the uh, presentation. Since we are interested in discovering novel natural product BGCs, Sequencing and mining complete strain collections, specifically actinomycid strains, is also an alternative strategy as compared to exploring the soil metagenomes. In case of soil, very high sequencing depth, maybe to the magnitude of a few uh, terabases, would be required to recover complete uh, metagenome assembled genomes. Of all the species present in a particular soil sample, so after tasting the soil metagenome success, we thought that it is worth trying out uh, this particular metagenome-like approach uh, for this strain collection. So the strategy of TelSeq and NanoporSeq that we have used provides a novel economical option to maximize the chances of novel natural product discovery. 